What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone is having a great night so far. Tonight is a very special night for this channel. This is our inaugural Miami Hurricanes basketball roundtable. I have some very special guests with me. Matty Ice from the Canes Call-In Show. Got Charlie Strouser, former State of the U contributor, specializing in Miami Hurricanes basketball. He's also an alumni of the class of 1989 at the University of Miami, Charlie? That's correct. Gotta love it, man. Um, wow. It's always great to talk Miami Hurricanes football, but I, I get really excited talking about college basketball, especially for our beloved Miami Hurricanes. Past two years, it's pretty fair to say Miami has been plagued by false FBI allegations, losing recruits such as Emmanuel Quickly, Nasir Little, Depth concerns as well, plagued by injuries. That has not been the standard of play that Coach Larinaga has set at Miami. A lot of people are optimistic. We can change that right now. Going in so far, we just lost Dejan Vasiljevic. He'll be playing overseas, graduated, Keith Stone as well. Yep. Also, the Stetson game has been postponed. Anthony Walker still needs a couple weeks to get ready, and Sam Wardenberg, our stretch four, pretty good shooter from beyond the arc. He is out for the season as well. Guys, what is your outlook going into this season after Miami's 15 and 16 record going 7 and 13 um, conference play? Matt, we'll start with you. Um, well, I mean, just kind of showing up on what you just finished saying about last season, I think that there's three main components that contributed to the the horrible season last season and that's the lack of depth which you went over the injuries and also just defensive play and i think those three are all correlated together you know um you did mention the fbi probe too i mean that definitely did affect us in recruiting um but i mean honestly this season next season too because of the uh transfer we have elijah olani i'm really excited i think that these next two seasons have the potential to be really good. I think we have the potential to make the tournament in both of them. Absolutely. Charlie, what's your overview of Miami Hurricanes basketball going into this season? Well, I think, you know, you know, Maddie said well that you've got a, a, a good core team coming back. We got, you know, really much an older team. And if you look at historically, Coach L has done very well when he's had elder statesmen kind of running the floor for him. And uh, going back to the George Mason days when they were there and they went to the Final Four, he had an old team when we went to the, you know, the Sweet 16 with Shane Larkin and then again with Angel. Um, again, old teams, you know, seasoned veterans, you know, sprinkling some, you know, young studs as well. Um, you know, this year you've got, I think, five or six seniors. You've got a couple of juniors. You've got a couple of guys coming back now that are you know, were freshmen last year, like, you know, Isaiah Wong. Who are uh, you know in uh, Harlan Beverly and uh, Anthony Walker, um, you know, who've got another you've got you know a good solid year under the belt, got a lot of minutes last year, and then now you've got you know Earl Timberlake and Maddie Cross coming in, uh, who are both highly regarded freshmen. It's a pretty good recipe for what should be a good year in a shortened season. You know you got 25 games this year versus usually 30, 31, 32 games depending on if you play a you know, a midseason tournament. Um, and I think at the end of the day, you know, we've got a pretty good shot at having a deep run this year. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm, I'm very optimistic about this upcoming season. We got to start off with Chris Likes, guys. First team preseason all ACC. He joins the likes of Malcolm Grant, Jack McClinton to make this list. Guys, how, how important is Chris Likes? He's the heart and soul of this team. He's five foot eight, but plays like he's six foot five. Gotta love his heart, man. I think this team will go as far as Chris Likes go. Um, Charlie, what's your thoughts on uh, Chris Likes going into this season? Well, Larry has been talking about how in the offseason he's really progressed in terms of being a leader on and off the court and is really impressed by what he's been doing this year. So he's got, you know, high expectations, high bar for him. Um, I, I, I'm constantly amazed at some of the, you know, the moves he makes. Uh, either faking people out on the, on the offensive side or just, you know, being a real pest on defense on the defensive side. Um, I, I totally believe he's a 
warranted first uh, first team All ACC. I'm surprised he's not a Bob Cousy Award finalist, but that could change during the year. So let's see what happens there. I think he's going to have a great year. Absolutely, yeah. Matt. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, just just adding to what Charlie said too. It's it's really abnormal to find a five eight player who is, you know, I wouldn't say he's the best defender, the greatest defender, but just the amount of effort he puts on that side of the floor, like he makes an impact on the game. Um, not to mention too, is just shot creating ability. I think he shot 38 from 38% from three last season, if I'm mis not mistaken. I mean, he's lethal, man. And just, he's instant offense. And, and I totally agree. I mean, he's, it's well-deserved that he's on that list. Absolutely. And, you know, catering to Chris likes some of our other, other young underclassmen guards, Isaiah Wan, his development the second half of the year was quite amazing. It was definitely a positive surprise. I honestly thought Harlan Beverly would take a quicker step to the next level due to his high school. He was playing at Mont Verde in, uh, I think, North Florida. But, yep. man, Isaiah Wan's done a hell of a job. I like Harlan Beverly as well. I think he's a very elite passer. He has tremendous body control. Those are things you cannot teach at the next level. Guys, what are your thoughts about the two underclassmen coming in and their development moving forward? Um, so I'll start with Isaiah Wong. Isaiah Wong this year, I think, you know, this might be a hot take. I think he has a chance to challenge Chris Likes to be the leading scorer on the team. And the reason why I'm saying that is what he really, he really improved his game was he started shooting the three more consistently. He gained more confidence, you know, and even Coach L at Media Day said, that you know he's gaining more confidence in practice shooting the three and if you look at the last 10 games he averaged 14 points a game on 45 percent shooting which is pretty good for a freshman you know um not to mention too the fact that he had 20 he added 20 pounds of muscle you know that really helps his game he's someone who gets to the basket he's able to finish through contact i mean that does nothing but just add even you know more of a threat inside yeah, I agree. Um, I think, uh, as for Harlan Beverly, um, I mean, I, I, he was a little more inconsistent this year, I feel like. Um, I think he's going to step up this year a lot more. I think even from the defensive side, because I, I didn't think he was that good of a – not – his defense was a little lackluster to say last season, and I think he definitely can step it up this season and get a lot more playing time. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, you know, it's always tough as a freshman coming in learning to play defense at the uh, at the next level like this especially in the ACC it's tough you got you know guys who are much more much faster than you stronger than you and, you know more experienced than you um, but they really at the end of the season I think you know Isaiah really took a huge step forward and stepped up big when we needed him Harlan is, was totally inconsistent I agree with you he's got tremendous talent um, and I think he's going to have a good year this year too I think he's He's listened to Coach L. I think he's, you know, trying to be a better defender. Um, you know, Anthony Walker is kind of the wild card as the third, you know, mm -hmm. freshman last year. Yes. He needed more minutes. So I think he started seeing some more of that uh, towards the end of the year as he started listening more to Coach L. Um, but, you know, we're going to lean on him a lot this year without Sam, obviously. So looking, uh, looking for him to step up this year for sure. Yeah, and definitely, you know, speaking of Sam Wardenberg, I mean, I think it's going to be a huge loss. This is a guy who, you know, potentially – could have averaged a double double for us, you know, this upcoming season. He was a nice stretch for that we had. He was one of our better three point shooters beyond the arc as well. Coach K, you know, even gave him a shout out, you know, of how well he's been playing as well. I mean, Sam Wardenberg was really developing into a nice college basketball player, you know, at the ACC level. So we really are going to miss him this season. And speaking of Anthony Walker, in my opinion, I think he's got the most upside from all of the true freshmen last year. Athletically, he really oh, has a lot of talent. Yeah. It kind of reminds me similar to Lonnie Walker's athletic ability to a certain extent. I think Anthony Walker, he can really turn into a nice player at the next level, but he is another project that we have at Miami. Speaking of our forwards, Dang Gok and the development of Ronnie Miller. And we also have Nizier Brooks coming in. He'll probably be playing center. Um, what are your thoughts about Nizier Brooks coming in, Charlie? Well, he's the, he's the X factor, right? Because he's the guy who was, you know, an enforcer at Cincinnati, had to sit out last year. So we didn't really get to see him in the flesh, you know, really play 
you know, uh, what he could do for us at, on the court. Um, but, you know, given his size, his energy, um, everything, you, you, you know, buzz wise, you're hearing about out of practice, how he's really the, you know, the, the kind of the motivator on the team other than Chris, I think he's going to be a huge factor for us in pain. We haven't had a, you know, a big man like him probably since Kamari Murphy. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Nizier Brooks, AAC Defensive Player of the Year coming in. So he's got a lot of talent. That's a pretty good basketball conference as well, the AAC. Yeah. Matt, yeah. what are your thoughts about our big men? So uh, starting off with Rodney Miller, and then I'll go to Nizier Brooks. Um, Rodney Miller, I think we kind of know what he is. Um, he's kind <laughs> of like I – mean, I don't really think he's going to – he doesn't have much more of a – you know. Uh, his ceiling, he's already at his ceiling, you know, right. I think he's still a good backup center, you know, cause I think Nizir is going to start, um, and moving on to Nizir, you know, he's a really good, um, post defender. He's a really good defensive rebounder. And I think he's going to really help us in those areas, you know, cause you mentioned Wardenberg, you know, not playing this year. He was one of our better post defenders, you know, I think he led the team in blocks. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, and the thing with Nizir, he isn't a back to the basket type player who's going to post up, you know, he's kind of better when he's, you know, setting the screen and as a Roman diving to the basket. And so I think that fits in well with Laranega's offense, you know, totally. Yeah, absolutely guys. And, you know, speaking of Rodney Miller coming out of Oak Hill Academy, I got to say his development, it's been a complete 180 from when he came in as a freshman to now, I think personally for me, what I'm expecting for Rodney Miller is a Julian Gamble type year, you know, coming off the bench and contributing um, anyway, doing a lot of dirty work, getting rebounds, uh, finishing up near the rim. That's the way I see Rodney Miller this upcoming season. And, you know, hopefully Nizier Brooks becomes, you know, that talented defensive player we saw in the AAC. And plus, man, we've had a ton of issues giving up a lot of second and third chance opportunities. Yeah. Offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, we really need to clean that up moving forward. So having a presence like Nizier Brooks is going to be key. Also, guys, does anybody have the status on Dane Gok at all? Because he's had two career, I mean, life, I mean, sorry, God, where am I going with that? Season-ending injuries. Um, you know, that's not normal to have back-to-back. -back. I, You know, is he health-wise ready to go or is he um, still rehabbing? He's, he's still rehabbing. I think he's made very good progress. Uh, unfortunately, he's been a bit fragile and uh, can't seem to stay healthy. But um, we, we'll see. I think, you know, hopefully with you know, Nazir kind of taking the majority of the minutes and, and Rodney you know, developing like he did last year, maybe making that you know, next step again this year, Anthony stepping up, we won't have to rely on him as much as we probably would have in the past couple of years. Um, but uh, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Huh. absolutely and guys um you know our two true freshmen coming in I, I heard matt cross was already competing for a uh four spot power forward position coming into the season and we have earl timberlake you can line him up at small forward at the one at the two he can basically play any of the guard positions a lot of people already have him projected as a late first round pick some say he'll be a one and done we'll find out what are your first thoughts, Matt, of these two true freshmen coming in? So starting with Matt Cross, we kind of talked about this a little pre-show. Um, Matt Cross, deadly shooter. The one thing that really sticks out to me, though, is I, I feel like he's almost a better shooter off the dribble than he is off the catch, which is, you know, it's hard to do. Um, right. I would say he's, he's a really good defensive rebounder. Uh, I think he can help us in that area. Um, I think he's an average defender. I think he can improve in that area. Um, but I mean, I think he has the ability to spread the floor and I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he started, you know, eventually during the season, just because of that ability. Um, Earl Timberlake, I think Earl Timberlake is like, I saw like some video saying he's like the Swiss army knife or something. And I think that's like the most true statement just because he does everything on the floor really well. Um, he's a really good rebounder on both sides of the floor. Um, when he's able to get the defensive rebounds, he's able to push push the ball, you know. He's really good ball handling, really good court vision. He makes all the right passes. Um, I think that one area that he can improve is, you know, shooting from deep. I think that's the one thing that he could probably improve on. But besides that, like, he has the potential to be a really good two-way player too because, I mean, he has the ability to guard any position on the floor. You know, one, oh, I would say one through four. 
But, you know, it's, I mean, the future looks bright with those two guys. Yeah, especially if we go small. You know, if we, if we run small, you could probably put, you know, Maddie at the four, put, uh, you know, Earl at the three. Um, you know, Matt's, I think, got, you know, the athletic build and, you know, strength to be a good defender. He just needs to kind of, you know, just get more seasoned. You know, that's what it comes down to. I think, you know, Earl's, you know, definitely got the talent. Um, he's you know, kind of in that, that Lonnie Walker mode as well. Um, some people have compared it to Bruce Brown a little bit as well. So we'll see how, uh, how that plays out. But uh, if, uh, if Matt Cross were two inches taller, he'd probably be a, a really great stretch four. <laughs> uh, but he, I think he's kind of a tweener between that three and four zone over there. Just given that he's, I think it's what, six, seven or something like that. Yeah. Six, yeah. Seven. Yeah. Six, 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 seven. You know, we just kind of broke down our entire lineup guys. Uh, you know, what kind of offense are we going to see this upcoming season? We love to run a heavy ball screen offense. I, I feel like that's what coach Larinaga really preaches. Um, what do you guys expect with this personnel? We're going to see this upcoming season. Um, well, I think it's definitely going to be up tempo because you got a lot of guys who can run the ball. Um, I think you've got a lot of guys who are athletic enough to, you know, really drive the paint and, uh, you know, kind of inflict their will, if you will. Um, I just think it's one where you've got the, uh, you finally have the depth chart too. Um, right. you've got the 10 healthy bodies now, even with Sam out, um, if assuming that Deng is, uh, is going to play as well, but, uh, we've got the depth chart. If, you know, given that we've got a shortened season, hopefully we can stay healthy. Um, that'll allow us to keep running up tempo. Um, Chris is definitely going to push the ball. You know, that's going to happen. Isaiah is going to push the ball. Um, and all these kids can run. So I'm looking for, you know, pretty up-tempo, you know, um, definitely pick and roll kind of, you know, uh, specialty, uh, you know, coach specialty kind of season. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think it is going to be more of a high-tempo offense just because, I mean, I feel like last year it wasn't as much just because of the depth concerns and everything. And, I mean, we had trouble just putting bodies out there. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's really going to change this year. Um, in the half court, it's going to be a lot of ball screens, a lot of movement, movement, screening the screener and stuff. Um, so, yeah. You know, speaking of like Charlie just stated, we may see a small lineup. Um, you know, this is going to be a guard heavy offense. I believe that is the strength of our team. What's your projected lineup going into the season guys? Um, I personally have Chris likes at the one. I'm going to have Isaiah Wong at the two, Timberlake at the three, at forward. I'm going to see a kind of a flip-flop rotation with Walker and Cross, and then I have Nizier Brooks at, at the five, and I have Cameron McGusty, our third leading scorer this past season, coming off the bench as our sixth man. What do you guys have? Do you want to take that one first, Charlie, or? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'm pretty close. I, I'd say probably Cam's going to probably you know start at the three uh, until Earl gets his feet wet, so to speak. Because that's you know typical Larinaga when you bring in a you know a big stud like he like he's had with you know Bruce and Lonnie and you know guys like him, they don't usually start right away. Um, so I, I, I'd like to see probably you know Isaiah and Chris at the, the one two, uh, Cam at the three. Probably, you know, I, I'm not sure if Matt's going to see, you know, time starting at the four. Um, but, you know, you could definitely have to change, you know, a few guys there. Um, you know, maybe even Walker. But um, I'd say it's probably going to be, you know, Rodney and Nazir. Um, I think it's probably going to be your, your four or five. So I, I'm with you on, I think everyone had Chris and Isaiah as a one and two. Um, I have McGussie at the three. And then I actually think, I think, um, I don't know if at the start of the season, but I actually think that Timberlake could play the four. Um, Timberlake or Matt Cross, um, preferably Timberlake, just because of everything he can do. Um, and then I have Nizir Brooks at the five. You know, pass, I, I could, call me crazy, but I feel like this past season, when you mentioned Timberlake at the four, I feel like Miami is being very aggressive. Coach Larinaga has been emphasizing shooting, you know, the perimeter shots more, shooting beyond the arc, be more aggressive with that matter. Are you guys seeing that as well? You know, Miami in the past, they've had a ton of success, you know, when the shooting beyond the arc, when that shot's going in, when they have a high three-point field goal 
uh, percentage. I feel like Miami is better as a whole. Their offense is thriving, especially going up tempo. Am I, is that me or do you guys see that as well? No, I mean, I completely see that too. I mean, whenever you're making the three, it spreads the floor out, you know, it makes everything easier, you know? So I think that's going to be a key this season. If they shoot it well, you know, that's what's going to open everything up for them. Well, and, and Coach Hell's always talked about how if you can make you know, more than, you know, seven, eight, nine threes in a game, um, that's kind of the, the, the goal, you know, is to kind of get beyond that because that helps open up the floor, like you said. It res- gives you some respect in the paint, um, things like that. So I think it's all around the, you know, the three-point game has been so important in college basketball lately. Um, and we've got guys who can shoot it this year. So let's, uh, let's hope that they can uh, you know, really put that to good use. Absolutely. And, you know, looking over this non-conference schedule so far, I think the toughest game we have is going to be Purdue. Luckily, we are playing at home. Guys, how are we feeling about this short non-conference schedule? And I think Purdue will be a great test, you know, to see where we stand, similar to how we looked against Minnesota. Like we were talking about, you know, before we recorded, um, you know, beating a Big Ten pretty good opponent that makes the NCAA tournament a lot. I mean, I think that that'll kind of evaluate how far your basketball program is from making the big dance. Well, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you look at the, you know, typically you want to have 10, 11, you know, non-conference games to start the season right. to really work the kinks out. You know, now we've got what, five or six games at most. Um, you got 20 ACC games. It's, it's really going to be, you know, you got to take advantage of every single minute on the floor, you know, because it's just not going to be, uh, it's not going to be pretty going into ACC play with 20 games. Yeah. I think, I think it'll be really interesting to see. I'm actually looking at the schedule right now. It's only three because the Stetson game got canceled, right. um, which is, you know, let's uh, talk about a shortened season. Um, I think that it'll be interesting to see if the freshmen play more in those games, you know, especially against North Florida and Florida Gulf coast. I think they will. Um, so, I mean, it'll be super interesting to see how they can impact the game right off the bat. I'll tell you what, the first three games, not the hardest schedule. They're going to be taking on Chris Capel's Pittsburgh Panthers at home. Then we have Virginia Tech away. We're playing against a rebuilding Clemson team. It has a lot of question marks moving forward. Then we have North Carolina at home, NC State away. How do you guys think we fare? going into conference play at the beginning of the season. How, how do you think it will be a quick adjustment? Um, you know, we have guys returning, but as we've seen in the landscape of college football, some teams, they lose a few games. They, it takes a while for them to get going. You think Miami's going to have that same issue, guys? Well, I think, you know, starting off with Purdue as a, as a non-conference opponent in the Big Ten Challenge is a really good test for us because, you know, they're, they're going to be a good team. If we can hold our own and, and squeak out a W on that one, that'll really build our confidence going against Pitt. You get a you know win against Pitt and maybe Virginia Tech on the road. Uh, now all of a sudden you're going into you know some of the, the meat of the schedule against guys who are, you know probably going to be you know preseason top ten um, in North Carolina, North Carolina State. Um, that typically will you know, should should kind of segue that nicely. Um, so that's what I'm looking for there. I think that that'll give us a good stepping stone. Yeah. I'm, I'm just interested to see, like looking at the ACC schedule, um, we don't play FSU. Um, we play Duke once we play North Carolina once. Um, besides that, I think those are the only, we don't play Virginia, right? I think we play um, FSU late in the season, right? Yeah. Late second to last game. Just once. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I don't want to say it's an easy schedule because it's never an easy schedule in the ACC, but I mean, I think we could have fared a lot worse. Yes. You know, um, so North Carolina's going to have a really good squad this year though. Yeah. I, th- I think Paul has something to say about that though. Yeah, Matt. Cause I'm looking at the, the schedule at my, the Miami hurricanes website, not the one on ESPN. And it does have us playing Florida state twice and knowing the oh, ACC, wait. I feel like they're going to schedule your rival. So I could be I'm, – I'm just looking at the one on the Miami Hurricanes website because I know the one on ESPN is different. But if we're playing Florida State twice, what we got here yeah. on the website. Listen, yeah, no, that's, that's a that's very good ball. Leonard Hamilton basketball team. The guy's a hell of a coach. And, by the way, Scotty Barnes, the true freshman they're bringing in, highest rated 
in Florida State history. I'm excited what he can do at the next level. Those are going to be two very tough games, very hard games. Yeah, for sure. And then North Carolina, I mean, it's just rebuild and reload. I'm very interested how they're going to fare this upcoming season. I believe they have their guard, Anthony Harris, coming back from a tour ACL. They lose Cole Anthony, but man, they're going to be a very good team, specifically down low. They do have a strong four and five. They always go up tempo. I think shooting is going to be the key for North Carolina, and their bench is full of young, um, true freshmen that are going to be very good players at the next level. Guys, what do you think? Miami has to do to have success in this upcoming season? I think the veterans are going to have to really step up. That's really what it comes down to. We've got, you got to lean on your seniors and your juniors and just say, listen, you know, just plow through. And, and that's when you look back at, you know, the, the teams that have had success, like I mentioned, you know, the, the Angel Rodriguez team, the Shane Larkin team, they, we had seasoned guys in the paint. We had seasoned guys on the perimeter, um, guys who had been there before, kind of been through the battles, um, have won some tough games, lost some tough games. Uh, now's the time to kind of put it all together. And I think, you know, the chemistry should be there. It's not, there's not going to be a lot of this big learning curve of, you know, you know having three or four freshmen on a team and you know, some transfers, and they're all trying to, you know, learn how each other plays. I think they've got, to, you know, other than the two freshmen, we shouldn't have that issue this year. So I'm looking for them to kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat too. I think it's their top four out of five scores are returning. Um, and I mean, I just, I think with that, that big of a core, the, the amount of production that is returning, obviously we're going to miss Vasilovich and, you know, his shooting ability. But I just think with everything coming back and everything we coming in, like everything coming in, if it gels together, I think we're in for a really good season. Yeah, if you get Harlan to be more consistent and, and shoot you know, better on the perimeter and make better decisions on the perimeter and, uh, you know, add in Nazir, what he can do in the paint, I think, you know, he, like I said, he could be like a Kamari Murphy you know, type of guy where I think he could really add a lot to the game, be a double-double potentially kind of guy um, and really um, open up the perimeter a lot for us too. Yeah. Guys, ACC – Predictions. Who is in your top four? And then where do you have Miami in the ACC? So um, I think we kind of talked about this pre-show too. If right now I would say the top four are in no order, just because I could see anything playing out, is FSU, Duke, North Carolina, and Virginia. And I mean, I think that either one of those teams could, you know, win the ACC title, but I think after that, I think it's up for grabs. I think Miami could even be the fifth team. I, I think that I see them having definitely a better season than they've had fared the past two seasons. Um, I don't know if I'm prepared to say that they'll be the fifth, fifth team in the ACC, Fair. but I mean, I, I see them maybe like in the six, seven range. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's definitely one where the, the media, I think, has a seventh right now behind Syracuse in the preseason poll. Um, I could see us sneaking in, into you know, number five or, or six at, at some point. Um, I think we could finish in the top four, though. I really do. I think, you know, given given the season team and and as like Coach Alex say, we're an old team, I think we've got a real good shot of being top four by the end of the season here if we stay healthy. Yeah, yeah I, you know, it. I think in my opinion, I don't know if Miami could crack the, the top four. I, there's a lot of question marks for me as a team as a whole. Staying healthy is one of them. Losing Sam Wardenberg, Anthony Walker already injured. That just already kind of scares me going into the season. My number one team, UVA, there's a guy that they have coming in named Sam Hauser. Averaged 14.9 points per game at Marquette. A lot of people say he could have even been ACC player of the year preseason, sat out last year. I think UVA starts where they left off the past season. Duke is going to be a tremendous team. They have a five-star point guard called Jeremy Roach, five-star player, tremendous, tremendous player. DJ Stewart, another freshman who is a great shooter beyond the arc. Also look out for down low with Matthew Hurt, six foot nine sophomore. I think they're going to have a tremendous team with Wendell Moore coming back as well. I have UNC at the number four, and at my number three, I got Louisville. I think this is their time. 
They're going to rely heavily on a couple grad transfers that came in. But I think that's a very good basketball program. And watch out with Florida State. I'm very high on them as well. I think Scotty Barnes is the real deal. And I got Miami and Virginia Tech at that six or seven spot. I think it's going to rotate and Clemson's going to get in the mix as well. But I think eight teams get you in the dance. So if Miami can finish six or seven, I think we're in, guys. Yep. But hey, it's a different season. It's a shorter season. You have less time to really get your guys prepared. Charlie, what's your season prediction for the 2020 through 2021 Miami Hurricanes? Well, normally if it's a 30 game season or 31 game season, I'd say we'd probably win about 22, 23 games, probably finish in the, you know, the top half of the year season, top half of the standings, and then probably win, you know, a couple of games in the tournament. Uh, given this a shortened season, you know, we probably win our, you know, our non-conference games pretty easily other than Purdue. I'm going to give them the W there. So that's, you know, four or five wins right there. I think we're better than 500 in the uh, ACC play. So, I'd say we probably somewhere in that kind of, you know, 15 to 17 wins kind of category, which is, you know, would extrapolate to a 20 win season plus easily. Uh, we'll see what happens, but um, I, I, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle. Um, hopefully we can stay healthy and just, you know, play well and play like an old team. Yeah. I think it's a lot of it is going to come down to how the freshmen perform in their in their roles and then also just as charlie said two injuries you know that's out of right. our control and then you know you never know happens never know what happens with the COVID thing you know that's just an underlying factor um i'm kind of in the same range i'm trying to be a like a little more conservative just because of all those factors so i'd probably say like 13 14 wins okay very cool um yeah, I'm going to say 13, 14 wins. Like you said, Matt, um, it's hard to me kind of predict with such a short season. If, if this was like a 30-game season like Charlie was stated, I think we're, we're playing around the 19-20 mark with wins. Um, depends how we do non-conference-wise. But I got Miami. You know, I think they can make it in the round of 32. I think that's fair. But I think they should be in the dance. Like I said, like you guys stated, injury is going to be key. But I think that Chris likes and the development of Isaiah Wong – Harlan Beverly. And let's see how Cameron McGusty plays. If he takes that next big step, I wasn't the biggest Cameron McGusty fan this past season, but Hey, second year in a program, maybe he feels a lot more comfortable, develops a little bit more handles, takes care of the ball. Turnovers was a huge deal for us, yes. you know, turnovers and, you know, just second chance opportunities for other teams out rebounding opponents. We can never do that at all. So, you know, Hey, maybe Nazir Brooks comes in with that defensive presence He'll step up. And then if Rodney Miller can take on that Julian Gamble role, I think we'll be fine this upcoming season. And I, th I think of the world of Anthony Walker. I really do. I think he's going to be very talented. It's just really health-wise and how are two true freshmen, how good are they and how prepared are they for the next level if they're the real deal as true freshmen coming in, which they have been sold as. Charlie, I got one question for you before we take off, guys. Is sure. Kurt Caputo the, the head coach in waiting? Um, well, it depends on when, when coach L decides to stop, you know, it, it, it starts to think about retirement. I don't think he's anywhere close to that. I think a lot of people love it. have prematurely, you know, signed his retirement papers. Um, I think he's definitely going to be sticking around for a while. He's got, I, I hope when I'm in my seventies, I got that kind of energy because he's, uh, <laughs> I feel like you know, Charlie has some sort of uh, insider information, the way he's smiling over there. I think I think we got we got Coach L for a couple more years. I think I think Coach okay. Caputo is going to get lured away from another by another program before he comes to Miami. And I think University of Rhode Island interviewed him for the job. So there there are you know teams out there that are very interested in him. And fair enough, he's done an outstanding job. He's one of the best recruiters in the ACC. So oh, for sure, definitely, I think, guys. I think he's going to get his due eventually. That's for sure. Absolutely, got to love it, guys. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it, taking time out of your night. Um, hopefully we can enjoy college basketball as much as we're enjoying college football. Um, maybe we'll crack the top 10, top 20. I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. <laughs> but thank you so much. Let's hope. Thanks Go Canes, guys. Go Canes, guys. Always. All about the U. Appreciate it. All about the U. Thanks for having me, guys.